Hi, how is everybody today? Glad you could stop in. Pardon me, I was eating chocolate. Um, today I'm going to start off by giving you a little like homework lesson that you can you can read this stuff at home and uh, see what you think about it. Now, as I said yesterday, I'm not interested in any comments or nothing like that. I, I don't want any accolades or disapproval or approval. I don't want none of that. So just don't bother with it. Um, I'm here to read God's word and maybe help you in your uh, walk with him. Um, I'm trying to wear a hat because trying to cut down some of the glare off my bald head yeah, just kind of like jumps out at you. Uh, I can't do nothing about the glare off my glasses though because if I take my glasses off then I can't see nothing. That's especially for reading. I need the bifocals here. But today the lesson uh, that I want you to study on your own is um, it's about sex for married people. Now, I know there's a lot of different opinions on, out there about this, but I'm not interested in it. I only care what the Lord says. So you keep your personal opinions to yourself. Okay. You can write this stuff down so you can look at it later. I can always watch the video again. The first one I want you to look up and read is Ecclesiastics chapter 9, verse 9. The next one is Mark chapter 10, verse 9. Then we go down to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15, 18, and 19. Then we go down to 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. Then we go down to Genesis, chapter 3, verse 16. Then we go to Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Okay, that's for... Uh, your reading in your personal time. Let's see, what shall we read today? Uh, I concentrate mostly on the New Testament because the New Testament actually means New Covenant. Okay, so there's a lot of different opinions on this and once again, I don't care. But the Old, the old Testament was means Old Covenant or law. When Jesus came, he got rid of the Old Testament and reestablished with us a new covenant. And he said, when you're born again and stuff, that old things are passed away and everything's become new. So it's like when he died on the cross, it was a new covenant, covenant that he established with all of us. Um, if there was anything pertinent in the Old Testament that Jesus wanted us to know, and it was, you know, important, he brought it forward into the New Testament. If you read your Bible, you'll see that. I don't focus very much on the Old Testament anyway because it was a book of the law. So it's like when Jesus came, he got rid of all that. And like I said, if it was important, he brought it into the New Testament. Okay, let's see. Well, how about we do the Book of Acts today? Sorry, you can't see me, but I, or my book, but I have the Bible here. I'm looking it up as you're looking it up. So, let's see. Oh, and I don't, 
I'm not advertising anything here. That's just what was printed on my hat. I have other ones too that plug businesses and stuff, and I don't like to to do that in my videos. I'm not paid by them, so why advertise for them? Please disregard this. Maybe I'll put duct tape over it next time or something. But this is a hat my wife and kids got me uh, years ago. I can't remember how long ago. Back when we had the house that we lost, no longer have. But uh, okay, let's see. <sighs> Let's go to John 6. We'll start out, uh, let's see, verse 25. Jesus, the bread of life. That's what this is about. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You're looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs and because you ate the... Sorry, my phone going off in the background. Um, but because you ate the loaves and, and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endure, endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God the Father has placed his seal of approval then he asked them what must we do oh to do the works god requires jesus answered the work of god is this to believe in the one who has sent yeah so they asked him what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe in you, believe you. What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from the heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread of heaven, but it is from my father who gives you the true bread from the heaven or from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives you the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. <clears throat> All the Father gives me will, will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Now this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none. All of that he has given to me, but raise them up at that last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and will raise him up on the last day. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, This is not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will be all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. I'm the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may, a man may eat and not die. 
I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats the bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give you, which I give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves. How can this man give us flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you you have no you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down out of heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said, he said this while teaching in the synagogue in, in Capernaum. And this part is um, many disciples, they just up and deserted Jesus. <sighs> On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is the hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend? To where he was before the spirit gives life and the flesh counts for nothing the words i have spoken to you are spirit and they are life yet there are some of you who do not believe for jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and and who would betray him he knew in advance he went on to say this is why I told you, no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many of the disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave, too, do you, Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, I have not chosen you, the twelve, yet one of you, <clears throat> one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Though one of the twelve was later to betray him, Okay, now we're in chapter 7. Uh, Jesus goes to the Feast of Tabernacles. After this, Jesus went around went around in Galilee, purposely staying away from Judea because the Jews were, were waiting to take his life. But when the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near, Jesus' brother said to him, You ought to leave there and go to Judea so that your disciples may see the miracles you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Therefore Jesus told them, The right time for me is not yet come. For you... For you, any time is right. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of what it does is evil. You go, you go to the feast. I'm not yet. I'm not yet going up to the this feast because for me the right time is, has not yet come. Having said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the feast, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. 
Now at the feast, the Jews were watching him and asking, where is that man? Among the crowds, there was a widespread whispering about him. Some said, he's a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the Jews. Jesus teaches at the feast. I don't want this to get too long. Can't see the screen. It's okay. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, my teaching is not my own. It comes from him who's, who, excuse me, got to the page. And it's sticking. Who sent me? If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find find out whatever my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does not gain honor for himself, but he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law, yet not one of you keeps the law? Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon-possessed. The crowd answered, Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said unto them, I did one miracle, and you're all astonished. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a child on the Sabbath. Now if a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses may be may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing the whole man on the Sabbath? Stop judging by mere appearances and make the right judgment. And I'll stop right there for right now. Because I don't I don't want this to get too long and take up too much of your time. But tomorrow or the next day we shall continue. And if I don't forget, we're on John 7, chapter, or verse 25. So, I love y'all. Have a blessed day. Until next time, either later or up there. Have a great day.